So window functions in DAX are really, really neat. It allows you to do easier row by row calculations. So in this video, we're going to go through what a window function is, how it works with an example. And then in future videos, we will go through the different uh, functions, window functions, and explain them in more detail. Don't miss it. They are very, very important to know and really useful. Okay, so window functions, what are they? So window functions allow you to do calculations in groups of rows. And let me show you with an example. So I have here on Excel a table that has employee IDs, the departments and the salaries. And, you know, aggregation functions, which is the ones that we normally use in DAX, what they do is they work on columns, right? So you can easily do the sum of all of these and get all the salaries. But if you're trying to be more specific and see what is the salaries per department, obviously you can do it in a visual. You can create a table visual that will, you know, collapse and do the sum of each. But if you would like to have a table, but if you would like to have a table where you have the employee, the department, the individual salary, and the total salary by department, you can do it, but it gets a little bit more convoluted with that. Okay, so the window functions allows you to do this like very, very easy. Let me show you with an example. Okay, so here we have the exact same table. And what we want to have is a column here that will give us the sum per department. And uh, this is how we can do it now with the new window function. Again, I will do separate videos then to explain all the details of everything, but just for now, so you can actually see how things work. So we're going to do uh, salaries by department, okay? Uh, and then we do shift enter. And then we're doing to do calculate. And what do, we want, what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate the sum of salaries. So this salaries measure is sum of salaries. Nothing weird. And this is where our window function comes. So what we want to say is that, okay, grab this window of data, the developer data, and do the sum. Grab the personnel and do the sum. Grab the sales and do the sum. So let's look at what it says here under the documentation what the window function does. So it has a two. It has a, I think it's actually easier to look in here. So it has a position to start a window. And then it should be a absolute or relative. We would go through that uh, in the window video. But we're going to use for this case absolute, which means to start from the first row and end into the last row. So this is start from row one for the entire window and then end in the last row of the window. And here it says that if you want to have the first row, you start with one. If you want to have the last row, minus one. So we will write uh, one apps minus one apps. Okay. Then you need to have a table. That table is the relation part. It says a table expression from which the output row is returned. So you can either leave it blank, but then you have to specify order by or partition by. Or you can specify the table to be fed to the window function. You say, you do the window thing in this table that I give you. And then you don't need to specify R either order by or partition by. And then there is another parameter here that for now only supports keep. They will allow for more, but for now only supports keep, so you can actually ignore it. Also, if you ignore these, the rel or the abs, the default is relative, not absolute, okay? So if you want absolute, you have to specify. So let's get back to Power BI. Okay, so window. If you remember, the first one is we want to have the first of the position, the first position of the list, which is one apps. And then we want to have the last one. If you remember, it says minus one for the last position on the table that we specify. And then you have here the relation, if you remember, it was the table that we should do the window thing on. And in this case, we're going to specify it. We're going to do summarize, and then you need to do all selected. Don't forget that, otherwise you're not going to get things right. We'll talk about it in another video. So we're going to do all selected salaries. And then in here, the table that you want is both the department name and the employee ID. If you only put the department name, you will get developed personnel and sales only once. You don't want that. You want to make sure that you feed the entire table. So 
here we're going to do department name and employee ID, okay? And now you don't need to specify anything more. You can actually stop here if you remember. So if you specify table, you don't need to do order by your partition bar. So if you do that, put it there. Think about what it's doing. We haven't specified the partition part. It's the one that says where to break this table, how to break it. And we wanted to break it by department name, but because we haven't specified anything, the one abs is the first row here, and the minus one abs is the last row here. So it's just giving us the entire, you know, total value, which is useful, right? It's, sometimes we need to do this, especially if you're doing percentages and stuff like that. Um, but we don't want that. What we want to do is, you know, like segment it by department name. And for that, we need to do comma, and then we're not going to do order by. Keep, we're going to, you can ignore it, so you don't need to do a comma for it. And here, we're going to have the partition by. Partition by. And then we're going to do by department name. So it says, this big table that I'm giving you, cut it by department name and give it the partial sums. And let's give it a whirl. And this is exactly what it's giving us, right? Really, really neat. Now, I want you to look at this. So we said start from one and finish in the start from the first and finish in the last. You can actually change that. And you can, if you start with two, you see that it changes from 25 to 19. So if we go here, so 25,000 is the sum of all of that, right? But we got a different number. So if because we said that it should start from row two. So if we get row two, it gets 19. So you see, it says, skip the first one, do the other one. This is so neat. And then you could do it like, you know, the other way back. Play with the functions is the best way to learn and to see how, what uh, result you get and try to understand where you get it. And yeah, things like that. So this is how window functions work. We have a few window functions available for us now. So I'm going to go through all of them in more detail in upcoming videos. So let me know if you have played with these functions and what you think about them. And I will see you again in the next video.